Vive Wadwa. Right. <laughs> I've been, I've been called worse. You've been called many things worse, and I'll probably <laughs> call you worse in this interview. Vivek is one of Silicon Valley's sternest critics, best known critics, most controversial critics, and he's also a man who has more institutional affiliations than uh, I've had hot dinners. <laughs> Vivek, how have you managed to be connected with about three or four hundred of the leading universities right. in the world? Andrew, I started off as a tech guy. I started writing code like most of your viewers do. And I ended up uh, building technology, which was revolutionary, led to the creation of a company. I became an entrepreneur, founded my first company, took it public. They got sick of work being in, in a public company because it wasn't fun. I mean, you know, people think that the, the IPO is the ultimate thing. The IPO is, is horrible. I mean, life changes and, and uh, it's not fun anymore. So I started my second company after that. Spectacular success, gone to trouble. I fixed it. And then, guess what? I had a massive heart attack. And that was my life-changing event. I had to figure out what to do next. And I knew that if I went back into the tech world, I'd burn myself out again because I get very intense. Um, so I, instead, I decided to become an academic. In fact, my wife pushed me to be an academic. I joined Duke University. And I took my entrepreneurial energy to Duke as an academic. I started doing research into US competitiveness, what's right about this country, what's wrong about it. And I was shocked at how much of an impact I was making. I was shocked how much controversy my research was creating. I was just documenting simple things about globalization. And it was creating controversy after controversy. In an academia, if you're not a PhD, I'm, I'm just a mere MBA. You know, they try to swallow your life. But if you're a tech entrepreneur, you're a tough bastard. <laughs> That's the one, the one thing you learn in the, the tech world is that you stand up to anything and everything. No matter you know, what goes wrong, you rise above it. And I did that in academia. And to my astonishment, I got invited to give a talk at Harvard. Richard Freeman, one of the leading labor economists in the world, invited me to give a talk. And I was absolutely thrilled. I mean, getting to talk at Harvard? That was a big deal for, you know, for a mere mortal like me. And afterwards, he took me out to dinner with his faculty and said, we'd like you to join Harvard. And I called my wife up and said, Tavinda, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, Harvard. So we went to, to Boston for a few months. Didn't like Boston. I mean, it was too cold and it wasn't us. So I ended up declining them. And they said, no, uh, we'll give you a fellowship. So they've been redoing me as a fellow for after, after every year. And then we wanted to be in Silicon Valley because I was researching uh, US competitiveness. I was researching what makes Silicon Valley what it is. I documented the fact that 52% of the startups in Silicon Valley are founded by immigrants. I documented the fact that 25% nationwide are founded by immigrants. I got into the midst of the immigration debates. And then the question was, what is, it, what is it about immigrants that makes them so successful? So I decided to come here to Silicon Valley to research it. And I had got an affiliation with Berkeley. And then uh, uh, Singularity, you know, it's Peter DeMantis. And, I mean, it's a different story altogether. But Peter DeMantis, founder of the X Prize, is one of the most amazing people you will ever, ever meet. Pure genius, visionary, he's talked about changing the world. He got paid to Singularity. And then Stanford came along and offered me a fellowship. So six universities, is, uh, sorry, in between, Emory University also came to me and offered me a, a distinguished visiting fellow slot, along with the Dalai Lama and Salman Rushdie. So <laughs> ended up adding all of this. And you, they're all paying you? This is a good so, business model. This, and, is, this is the uh, new uh, business model, right? Frankly, Andrew, I don't make much money. I, even uh, Duke University, um, they paid me a nominal salary, but it wasn't about money. It was about giving back. You know, what's been driving me for the last few years is giving back to America. This country has done so much for me. I always wanted to give back to this great country, and I took a small base salary from Duke. Harvard paid me my expenses, they paid for my research. What I've been doing is taking a lot of the funds that the university would have spent on my salary, diverting it to my research. I've published you know, about 14 or 15 major, earth, you know, uh, major papers which have made an impact. They've cost a lot of money. I've invested it all, my salary in research. So I haven't taken home much. I make, I make you know, less than almost all of your viewers make, but it's been a way of giving back. Well, Vivek, you elicited or have elicited great controversy right. for your, amongst other things, for your analysis of Silicon Valley and race. Would it be fair to say that you see Silicon Valley as being an environment hostile to both people of color and women? Well, he, here's what, I mean, I've always been Silicon Valley's biggest cheerleader. That is an amazing place. It's uh, the fact that 52% are immigrants. I thought it was the world's greatest meritocracy. Until I came here, and I, I write about these things. You know, I read the comments that people post on my TechCrunch articles. You my do? Ministry. You should never read those. I, I know, but the point them. is I, I do read them. Even the, uh, the hurtful ones, it, I just sort of brush them off. It doesn't bother me anymore, but <laughs> I do read them. And, peop and women started pointing out to me, saying, Vivek, you keep talking about uh, Silicon Valley being a meritocracy. Look at the data. 
And then I had the number of you know, African-American blacks basically writing to me, saying that, where are the blacks? The Hispanics wrote the same to me. And you know something? I started looking into the data, and they were dead right. That um, according to the Kaufman data I looked at, only 3% of the tech firms are founded by women. And when you looked at the blacks and the uh, Hispanics, almost non-existent. And suddenly opened my eyes when I was at a tech crunch, crunches conference. Uh, it, you know, it happened that um, uh, you know between Mike, um, Mike Arrington and he had Heather Hardy on stage, woman. Sarah Lacey was on stage, woman. And then there was a performer on stage, three women, all else male, no blacks. There was one black who happened to be representing his country, his company CEO, but it was an all white. So, you know, so is Silicon days. Valley actively discriminating when a, a VC sees? A black man or an Indian man or a woman in the room, do they say, oh, I'm not going to invest in this person? Well, here's the problem, that the VCs believe that uh, they have some supernatural abilities to, to know an entrepreneur when they see one. It used to be that that uh, entrepreneur was uh, you know, a young uh, white male, and then the Indians and Chinese make, you know, cracked into that group as well. So uh, the, what the VCs uh, do is that they, because they've had a few people who are successful who had one particular characteristic, they, they, when they see another one, they think, aha, this is going to be a successful entrepreneur. The women and blacks haven't, haven't broken those barriers yet. There are some women, but really... Even Indians? Indians broke the barrier 15 to 20 years ago. Uh, that's different. So if you're an Indian, you actually have an advantage. You'll find, you know, Indians will find that they get their calls returned faster than the average people do because the perception is that Indians make great CEOs. One out of every seven companies in Silicon Valley had an Indian CEO or a CTO from 1995 to 2005, one out of every seven, 15.5%, at a time when the, uh, the Indian pop Indians constituted 6% of the Silicon Valley population. 6% founding 15.5% of Silicon Valley's companies, mind-blowing. But that's because Indians cracked the code. They, they mastered the Silicon Valley's rules of engagement, and they figured out how to, how to achieve success. But they're the exception here. Women haven't done that yet. This is why I keep telling them, form your own men, because I, I researched it as to why Indians did it. What they did was that they founded a group called TIE, T -I -E, the Indus Entrepreneurs. We started mentoring each other. So in the first generation of Indians, you know, Vinod Kosla, Kanwal Reki, and a bunch of others, when they achieved success, they said, look, uh, uh, you know, th there's no doubt about it. They weren't shy. It's not like the battles we're having right now when women saying, hey, there's no discrimination against us. It just happens that we don't, we're not anywhere. There's no discrimination. Everything is OK. They said, no, there's discrimination. Let's face it. And uh, the other thing that they realized was that the way to rise above discrimination was to achieve success. That Silicon Valley, at, at the end of the day, cherishes success. It doesn't matter what you look like, who you are, male, female, transvestite, you can be anything you want to be. If you're successful, Silicon Valley cherishes you. They figured this out. And what the other thing they figured out was that Silicon Valley is one giant network. The way you achieve success is by mentoring, by helping, by exchanging ideas. By, uh, by facilitating others to succeed. So they said, let's start helping each other. They did it, and within a short period of time, there were hundreds of startups by Indians. Many of them achieved uh, major, major success. Why do you think your views on this have elicited such controversy and such anger from within Silicon Valley? Because I'm taking on the old white boys club, very frankly. I mean, the, look at the people who've been attacking me. You know, look at the characteristics. It's really, you know, the, these arrogant people who think that they're gods that they're better than everyone but else. But to be fair, there are also a lot of white men who support you. Absolutely. Uh, you I mean, know, it, for the it, record, um, I have had 20 times more people sending me you know, thank you notes, uh, you know, appreciating what I'm doing, than who've been attacking me. The people who've been attacking me are the outliers. The trouble is that they tend to be the most visible people in Silicon Valley. And they're the ones who get uh, the most attention in some of the tech blogs. The majority of people are very um, open-minded, very balanced. And they've been appreciative of what I'm, what I'm doing. This is why I'm fearless about it, because I have so much support from the community. Vivek, for Silicon Valley to become, at least in your eyes, a true meritocracy, what needs to change? I want to see an equal number of women starting companies as men. But, there's no but doesn't why. that require a kind of social engineering? No, it, it requires women to help each other. I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not for affirmative action. I don't want quotas. I don't want anyone to do women a favor. Women can do it for themselves. What they have to do is they have to help each other. They have to do what the Indians did. Indian, no one, you know, there wasn't charity that anyone gave to the Indians. Uh, you know, the Indians basically got together and said, we're going to help each other. And they changed the stereotype uh, for what successful people were, and they achieved uh, major success. Women can do the same thing. Blacks can do the same thing. This is why I keep, you know, in that documentary which, which created so much controversy, uh, um, uh, Blacks in America, uh, I was advising this, the, you know, this black, what I told the black people was, I said, the problem is you don't help each other. Now that, 
you know, cause everyone to gasp. They were shocked that I would say that. But the reality is that, that those groups have not been helping each other. They need, need, need to do what the Indians did and help each other. Women need to help. Women are beginning to help each other. There's some really great groups. I'm, I'm a big fan of Women 2.0, you know, Astia, uh, Anita Borg, uh, MC Witt. I mean, they're group after group after group. They're doing amazing things. I'm a big fan of theirs. Anytime, anytime they invite me, I go to their meetings. So the women are doing it. The African Americans are beginning to do it. The new ME Excel, the new ME accelerator is a good step forward. It's a very tiny step. We need to have that on a much larger scale. But the way to fix this isn't for Silicon Valley to do anything. It's just for these groups to do it themselves, and for Silicon Valley to be more aware that there's a problem here. So these arrogant venture capitalists who uh, you know treat women like shit, they need to uh, realize that they're doing that. And in these venture capital firms, it's not the majority. Uh, in fact, in all of the venture capital firms, all the leading venture capital firms, the majority of the, of the males, the white males, uh, you know, the Indian males, are very open-minded, they're very inclusive. What always happens is that there's one arrogant uh, partner who you know, uh, uh, vetoes the entire deal. It, it, everyone, in most firms, you have to have everyone giving their thumbs up. One person can veto an entire deal. There's always one sexist, racist in these venture capital firms who, who basically tars the reputation of everyone else. The majority of the venture capitalists are great human beings, and many of them are my, my best friends. So I'm not faulting the majority, I'm faulting these minority who give everyone else a bad name. Finally, Vivek, what would you say to the successful African-American or female entrepreneur who would say to you, I, I don't want to think of myself in gendered terms or in racial terms, I'm simply a person, and the last thing I'm going to do, having been successful, is mentor people purely of my own gender or race. I wish some luck. There are a lot of people like that who don't want to help others. But this, uh, this, is, this is the difference between the Indians and the others. The Indians said, look, uh, you know, in India, it, uh, India was ruled by the British by dividing and conquering. I'm sorry, you know, don't take it personally, my <laughs> friend. But the point over here is that uh, Indians didn't help each other in India. When they came to Silicon Valley, they said, we're going to help each other regardless of who we are. We're going to help each other. So by giving back, they made the pie, everyone gained by giving back. So the people who achieve success and say somehow, because I achieve success, I'm special, I'm a god, I want to be a person, my attitude is fine, be what you are, but the world isn't going to give back to you when you need it next time. By giving, you end up gaining a lot. I mean, my, my whole career right now, last seven years, all I've been doing is giving back. And look at how much I've achieved. The more I give, the more I gain. You know, it's, I mean, this is the most wonderful thing I've ever learned to do is to give back. So people who don't want to give back, I feel sorry for them. They're going to live miserable lives. The people who do, do give back are going to be very happy for the rest of their lives. Well, Vivek Wadwa, uh, I think what you need to do now is go out and build some more affiliations with universities. You don't have <laughs> enough. And uh, I think you need to think up some more controversial positions because at the moment <laughs> your, your, your act is a little bland. <laughs> right, right. So right. next time when you spice things up, you can come back on my hey, show. Hey, the U.S. government, which I've been so critical about, they, made me, they nominated me Outstanding Citizen by Choice. So, <laughs> Well, you're the Outstanding Citizen by Choice on today's Keen on TechCrunch TV. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, you so much. It was an honor.